We're in. Right, so that looks familiar. Got obsidian right in there. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just uh, go through this really quickly and I'll show you what I've done so far. And then you can yeah. tell me how to do it better. Cause I'm definitely a little stuck. I feel like I'm, I feel like I might be overdoing it. Um, so the big thing is I read a lot of mental toughness books. So I want to mm -hmm. just keep them understanding. So there's going to be a lot of like just compiling information and obsidian for that. I, this is a really kind of a low, a low, an easy way to build the habit of using it because I've been watching everything you do on WhatsApp forever. And, <laughs> and uh, like, I got to get into, I got to find something easy that I can wrap my head around to start with to get, yeah, for sure. Get it. Then I want to like use this to see the commonality of these concepts that, that I, that I read in all the books. So I've read a bunch of business books that are essentially mental books and uh, coaching books and then athletics, like coaching books and totally get all these commonalities. So it's a quick way to, to, to get all the commonalities in one place to actually a quick place to go and, and reread about it. Um, mm -hmm. And then maybe eventually write a book and uh, yeah. also like launch, like the, use it to launch social media content as well. Sure. Um, the way I see the world right now is there's key concepts and mental toughness, really, and mm -hmm. MT. There's coaching techniques, because I, I do a ton of, of coaching across all types. And uh, that's not my main business or anything, but but I do. They're the actual authors that write books. They do social media blogs and stuff. They have quotes in their books that explain these concepts. And then there's my interpretation as well. Yeah. The way I see them all coming together is the key concept is the common one that coaches write about. They distinguish it in their books and their social. There's coaching techniques they write about in the same way. And then everything else kind of supports that. So there's authors that write books that have content. And yeah, and so they all kind of connect. And then if you if you look at my Obsidian, I started with, I've learned, the, I'm, I'm pretty quick to learn the markup, which is super handy. Mm -hmm. um, so I decided, okay, what if I create a key concept list and then as I like work through it, I'll like then create the actual page because once I click on it, it creates. And then if I go, I think it's this one, this one, which is it? Where is it? Oh, it might be mindsets, right? So here, I have a key a key concept which is obstacles make you stronger and then the first author i have is greg harden in his book stay sane in sane world and i have two sets of quote two quotes to kind of explain the concept and then i would have i don't know brian holiday obstacle obstacles away a couple of quotes great book like, yep on down uh yeah and so i i, I started doing that like i built a list of authors um, yeah no but i just started no. okay well first of all awesome right you, you're making oh, progress you. you're playing with the tool you're poking yeah. around at it and i love it because you you're now at the point where you're like before i get super invested in this mm -hmm. maybe i should check in yeah so <laughs> yes, um <laughs> love it um so for me um, in my system, because I do so much with it, um, eventually mental toughness consolidated would end up in my resources folder um, because it's something I'm interested in. And you know, if I turn in to write a book or do whatever, that would go into my projects. Um, if it was about my own life, it might be an information in an area, but I do this kind of stuff ex all the time. I had one that was, uh, I still have one. It's uh, mature, masculine maturity. What is it to be a mature masculine man sounds mm. silly but i was like i want to get it right yeah. um and so i started pulling together exactly what you're doing lots of information i don't think i'm going to write a book about it but it was something that uh some real gems came to me and they're they're connected and you would just see these connections of different perspectives and different authors like i love what you were talking about business mental toughness versus sports mental toughness um and i'm sure you'll come into other things so yeah. How I think about organizing it is at first, the mental toughness consolidated 
Um, I would have like you've got that one there, one mental toughness base note from Scott, right? Yeah. Is there's my the top level note. So the first thing that starts at the top of the list. Um, and then like you said, I usually have a overview. I do an overview in a content section in my note. So the overview can be, um, if I pop it open, I'm like, what the hell's in here? It's just, oh, well, a paragraph or two, a sentence or two. All right. And then the contents are usually where I have the body of the details. And so, um, and I use that template over and over and over again. Um, that's, that's this template right here. That's the home note. You don't have, let me give you the, okay. Uh, I'll give you a simple version of this one. I should be able to. I've got the home note template here. Yeah, it's a different template. It's it's called Z Unique Note uh, because I use Zettelcast numbers. Don't use Zettelcast. Don't unless you go to like tens of thousands of notes in your your. When you get over like a few hundred, uh, and you're like, uh oh, I'm stepping on each other. Uh -huh. I have too many chapter one notes. Um, then we can talk about doing. Okay. Uh, Zettelkassen. Um, I came at it from that world and I'm like, what the hell is this? So I ended up. What are uh, you saying? Zettelkasting? Okay. Z it's German. A Zettelkassen is a note box. It's German for like no literally note box. It okay. means in German slip box. And to them, is a slip is a slip of paper is a note. So it's like a note card. And I'm trying to find one of these that is just not chock full. This is close. This will this will get you. Uh, this one. I'll drop this in. Um, I don't know. Can you pass files back and forth? Um, I'm going to give you the text in the chat, and you should just be able to paste it right into a blank note. Um, okay. And hold, please. Let's open this with, that'll be fine. Okay, so you may have to do just a little bit of editing to remove some of the wacky codes that are in here. But what you're looking at that I just pasted in there is very similar to that home note where you've got aliases, your author, create date. Um, I thought I had one of these that was clean that didn't have all this code stuff in it. Let me see if I can find one more that's easier. Uh, so if I go ah, new note and I put new note in templates. Yep, make a new note in templates. And I paste. Oh boy, that that format I got crushed. Try um, Control Shift V and see if it preserves. Yeah, yeah, that's better. Delete all the stuff at the top, and then you mm -hmm. want to delete that blank space one more time until that turns that hole. Or you have to have the three hyphens at the very top, and then it'll turn it into a block of properties. It's a, a little annoying. Boom! There you go. So you can change it. Get rid of the TP created. Um, the anything that's in brackets with percentages just delete that garbage that won't work when you expand it like this yep like that yep just delete them get rid of them you can leave the note card tag if you want it doesn't matter the alias tag get rid of that um and then uh i would use the uh where it says percent bracket new alias that level one header uh-huh I would replace that with um, this. I'll type it in the thing. It's curly bracket, curly bracket, title, curly bracket. Um, and that will, when you expand this, it'll use the title of the file right there. Um, and yeah, so, cool. so if you call this maybe the instead of untitled, like note card template, At the the name of the file, so title you want titles. Uh, sorry, the word title is a is, that's a specific keyword. You want to keep that, oh. so you do want to keep that. It's the very top line of that where it says untitled. That's what you want to call 
no card template. There. Now you all, when you hit return, it'll call it that. Now you should, yeah, put your name in there. Um, you should be able to expand this every time you make a new note. Um, and you can go back, you can get rid of the next card, previous card stuff if you don't want to use any of that. But what this gives you is a slot for overviews, a place to put content, um, some fun things that uh, you might not know that you can do with Obsidian. So why don't you try to go back and go to, let's try this. Go to one mental toughness, your base note. Okay, under branches, add a new branch. So you're gonna- A branch in, is that? that? A branch is, yeah, that, two square brackets and give it a name, something new. So it could be a test note. We're gonna make a new, we'll delete it later. Okay. Hey, Ah, uh, it actually just linked to itself. So you want to delete that, sorry. I don't know why it did that. Um, you should just be able to type in test note. Yeah, new note, something like that, perfect. Now click on it. Okay, so you've got a feature we need to change in the file setting. See how these things are showing up at your root level? We don't want them to show up at the root level. We want them to show up in the folder where they're created. So yeah. you can drag them up in there, but we're gonna to wanna to go to settings. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. I've been dragging them. Um, and let me find off the top of my head, I think it's uh, files and links, or it could be editor. Where is default location for new notes? See where it says vault folder? Uh -huh. Click on that same folder as current file. Perfect. Yep, and then go ahead and close that. And now, you know, just delete it. Like right click on it uh, or right click on it and delete it. Let's make sure that works. Yep, delete it. Go back to that note. Now click on it and see where it appears. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've got to click oh, right. somewhere else in the note to get away from it. There, now click on it. Boom, now it appeared in the correct folder. That's where I want it. Perfect. Now, um, control P. Control P. Are you on a Windows machine or a Mac? Looks like Windows. Windows. Okay, yeah, control P. Um, type in insert the word or INS insert. It should say template, template. There you go. Templates, insert template. Yep. Click that. Note card. Click that. Boom. You now have. So anything that's weird that you're like, what's this purple stuff? You go back and clean up your template and get rid of this stuff that didn't expand correctly. Um, but now every time you make a new note, you basically can insert the note card template. And mm -hmm. you can even assign that to a hotkey so that it just goes and pops open. Um, now- oh, Hotkeys and settings? Yes. Hotkeys being, okay. Yep. So, Let's take one of your quotes. So let me show you a couple of things with a quote. So one of them you had, um, it was like, I forget where you're at. Yeah, okay, grab one of your quotes. Copy it. Go back to new note. Um, do, and in the content space, click down in there and do an open bracket and then type paste. And open, uh, I mean, like, yeah, yeah. it's like a greater yeah. than. Uh, below the word content, in the space oh, between okay. connections and right. content, do mm -hmm. a, but go up to that very first thing and then put in the greater than sign and greater hit space. Than. Boom. Okay. That is now a quoted, a block quote. So that's a formatting and markdown for block quotes. Okay. And it makes them stand out. Now I'll show you another cool trick is if you go below this one, so the line below, so right, right in there, hit return, do that greater than open bracket, I'll, I'll give you the text in the chat, open bracket, exclamation mark, note, exclamation mark. It looks like that. 
So there you go. Uh, you don't need the exclamation at the end, only at the beginning. So delete one. Yep. Then go to the right. Yeah, I got to use the arrow keys. I don't know if it'll work with the tab in there. Um, hit return. And get rid of the tab. Yeah. You just have to keep that. All right. I'm going to start over. Yeah. But there's a, what it does is it'll let you do a call out. And there's a ton of call outs. And if you hit return, it should give you another, there you go. Uh, you know, Fred Flintstone, whatever, you know, like I like this code, some, some piece of text that's in there and then hit return twice. Boom. Okay. You now get rendered with almost like book, like you can put in a, you can use the word note. You can word a side. If you Google on Obsidian callouts, they'll show you all the keywords. Okay. But if you use just a little bit of formatting when you're putting the information together, it makes it a lot for me a lot more readable. Mm -hmm. um, but now you're starting to get to where um, what I often do is when I'm starting to write the overview, you're like, man, this whole thing about you talked about obstacles. I'll put in this. This note is going to talk about the different obstacles from authors like, and then I can use, uh, I often, when I make a book file, I have a file for every book in my library. I can link to that book. It's a part of the reason I do that is I have a folder for my library. Um, and if you use a folder where you've got a note for every book, then you could begin to see how many times you're referencing that book, how many times you're connected to that book. So um, in my thing, you know, there's a, a not the different, different ways to do it. Omnivore is one. I think there's a plugin that will pull your Kindle highlights directly into Obsidian. That yeah. will give you a name of a book, but some way that you've got a note that's about just that book. And so when you're referring to a book more than once, you can begin to see, that was some really good information, but I will link to the authors and the books that I'm going to refer to in this note, typically in the top, but it can happen anywhere in the note. And so that's where I'm starting to build that web of like how things are connected. Um, but in general, quick overview, why am I doing this note? And then the content is where I do my work, which is here's the quote, my thoughts on the quote. Sometimes I use a call out. Sometimes I don't. And then I work through it till I'm like, oh, that was pretty good. And when I feel there's a new idea, that's when I would go and start the next note in the chain. So at that top thing where it says next card, that's where I might go, hey, um, let me, I'm, I'm gonna move now from, we were talking about, uh, I'll pick one. You said key concepts. You make it well. The next one that makes sense to me is cultivating confidence. So that would be my next note in the chain, and I would just start another note and link to that note. And to me, that's why I'm building out a thought chain. You don't have to do that. You could not use the previous card, next card at all. You could just say at, at the bottom of connections, here's the next note to me, and you just have that note to the next note. And again, start, give it a note card template and away you go. And you just keep working your way through. And the, to me, the advantage of that is once you start having these little atomic notes and these little atomic connections, you can use the graph mode to navigate it, but you can also use um, another tool they have. Yep. And, and it, to me, it's like sometimes I discover insights by bouncing around those. Um, but what is the thing on the right you're using? What application are you using that's actually got your text in it? Oh, this is something called same page. It's, we've been oh, on it. Oh, right. From, yeah, probably okay. More from, like, we, we were on it before uh, what's EO adopted it even. So yeah, OK. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's one of the ones where, yeah, if you've got a tool you use, I, I ended up migrating all that stuff. Like, those kind of notes end up in that folder for me. Like, everything ends up in a unless it's a word doc or a spreadsheet uh -huh. it ends up in obsidian but 
when you're organizing it, um, you know, you, it, it's really flexible, you know, like you said, now it, it should put things in there. Um, and once you've got sort of your key concepts in your thing, like you said, I would start you highlight and put brackets around them, start making notes and you've got a note card template. And now you have a way of just starting to capture things. And I frequently do that pattern of here's the source material. Here's what I think of it. And then as you get more and more and more source material, it's easier to build new notes from the connections, from the content you already have. So what if I wanted to, so the, the there, this is the note author, which is me. Correct. Yep. But I, two properties. So if this note, if this note is about a concept, like, so we, you know, I've been doing this KC key concept and then um, what's one that's that's not in here already? Uh, uh, I'm just trying to think of. You don't have quotes actually as a key concept. You have mindset. You have cultivate confidence, learn and grow, cultivate and live with purpose. But you didn't have KC quotes is the number seven six on your list. Yeah, and I don't know if a quote would be. Like a, uh, uh, I don't think I don't think a quote would be its own. Note. Uh, how about visualization? There's not a lot of mental toughness about visualization. Yeah, that's a great one. Yeah. Visualization. I think that's with an S, though, right? Oh, great. Yeah. Great. So okay. And so then return, and that'll rename that note. Yeah. Um, and then what do? Where do I connect to? Like this quote, do I need to, inside the quote, or at least under the quote, put a, um, Greg Harden. That, there you go, just like that. Boom, you've now um, connected that, that note to Greg Harden. Yeah, and then um, the other one is Stay Sane, but you, you have a, a whole folder that's just the books. Yeah, you don't have to do it that way, but because mm -hmm. I started, well, one of the, I, I did get fascinated with the idea of having my bibliography, like the whole resources in one spot. Mm -hmm. And so every, so I use an app called Zotero and there's a plugin for Zotero that will, so Zotero, I can go to Amazon, see the book grab the book and it loads it into Zotero. Zotero grabs the ISBN, the published date, the authors, all the information. Then I use a note called MD, uh, MD note and it will export a Zotero record into Markdown format. I just save that in my library. And when I open that file, I now have the, the basically the Amazon description of that book is in my library. And since I've been reading on Kindle since they launched it, I've been on Audible since it was on the Palm Pilot, I have like probably collectively almost a thousand books. So it's just a stupid amount of stuff to manage. But if you're just starting out, it's like, oh, it's easy to just do it manually. Yeah, got it. But but the Zotero, you literally just, it's a free easy use tool to help you collect, organize, and annotate, site, and share research. Yeah, I steal stuff from you know, researchers, people that write academic papers that have to be cited. Uh, true story, my dad was a, a real electrical engineer and um, he would say stuff that was complete bullshit with total confidence. And my mom finally started asking him, how do you know that? And he finally go, well, well, in my opinion. So as I started getting into this, I would say things like that. I'm like, I better cite my sources. Mm -hmm. And so I really, if I was going to just say something, especially if it was controversial, I wanted to know, uh, like one of my favorite books is Punished by Rewards by Alfie Conan. And like, you want to start quoting from that book, you better know the sources. Because people are like, what do you mean incentives are bad? Well, wait, I said they can be bad. Yeah. But there are people like, you can't say that. Or uh, The Antidote uh, by Oliver Berkman is a great book that goals aren't everything. And sometimes goals are bad. And people are like, no, goals can't be bad. I'm like, well, I, wait, <laughs> you know, it's, like, it's more complicated than that. I can cite yeah. my sources. 
So that was you seen to me. Alfie, Have you ever seen Alfie Cohen talk in person? No, I have not. Is he good yeah. or is he bad? He's off the charts. So good. Oh, yeah, I would so love good. to see him present. Yeah, I, I, I suspect because that was 15 years ago. Wait, yeah, 15 years he's ago. He's been doing so. this a long time. Yeah. yeah, so it's he's probably off the speaker circuit, but it was it was eye opening. I when uh yeah when when I realized what what grades actually did, I was like, whoa, that's that's a little crazy. Oh, no, um, it really is. It's it's it yeah falls into that stuff. So cool. Once so you then, start putting your books in, like you said, in the same yeah. world, if I hit if I hit that, I can use Otero to pull the Amazon stuff out of it. Yeah, I can or potentially I could go to Amazon and do it manually, right? Yep. I could find find the book and then literally just copy this. Yep. hundred percent. Grab that, make your own thing, and stick it in there. I mean, there's lots of ways to do it. What for me, having little, these little text files and somewhat of an organized system, Obsidian lets me link them together. And then one of the things that I I like about it is if you were to click on at the top right. Um, just before you get to the minimize button, one more up. It's all the way up on the tab bar. Okay, left, left, there. Click on that, uh, the other one. Not a new tab, but click that thing. There's your link mentions. So every time you reference this book in any note that you reference this book, it'll show up. And Obsidian will, even if you don't explicitly link it, but you mention it, it'll find that too. So yeah. the the power the, the big insight that nicholas lumen had who created the zettelkasten system and why this bi-directional linking is a big deal is that um most systems only link in one direction they're like i'll send you to the page but you have no idea how to get back to where you came from other than the back button right what he wanted to be able to do was traverse his notes and follow the links either way so you could jump from this book to say it could lead you to a book by Ryan Holiday, and then Ryan Holiday could lead you to a book on ethics and media because he wrote that book, Trust Me, I'm Lying. And all of a sudden you jumped from staying sane in an insane world to somewhere completely else. That path is if you if you sit down, you can make a coherent chain of thought out of that path why they're related and connected. That's an insight. Yeah. yeah. And that's when the power of the tool to me really starts to open. And as you start collecting more and more, like, I love what you're doing, right? Mental toughness, what fits that? I mean, there's so many topics that, and as you pick more books, more articles, more resources, if you, you know, start creating their little chunks, then as you start assembling your thoughts, you begin to see the patterns emerge and that's why for me that content's part of it sometimes i'll just give it a level two header that says my thoughts i won't do it as a call out like i'm like i'm gonna write about this like i've had an epiphany and this this for me is why people are like oh i could have ai do it i'm like yeah but i want to think about it i want to express my thoughts on this topic i want to work with these ideas and see what they mean to me because i there's a saying that sometimes people don't even know what they think until they talk about it this is a way for me to actually discover what I think about some of these topics. Okay, nice. I was sorry, I was clicking around. I was trying to figure out where you were. <laughs> oh no, it's okay. Where, I'm like, where the heck is he? <laughs> where, where is Scott? <laughs> okay, so then you. So here's where here's where I still get a little stuck. Sure. So. Uh, so I do feel like it's really important for me to start with a good uh, hierarchy, um, mm -hmm. or maybe I'm not even sure if hierarchy is the right right way to say it, but a, a, a good labeling system, no labeling system, right? Um, and and so I 
Oh, and then there's tags too. How do you use tags? Oh boy, that's a great question. I don't. I, don't? I okay, but put it differently. I tag the crap out of everything, and I I was just thinking about this on the call. I'm like, when I said, oh yeah, there's the note card thing, and I'm like, you know what? I can't think of a single instance where I've ever actually used a tag to find anything. Mm. Tag ends up as it, so there's this whole okay esoteric thing about taxonomy. Taxonomies, taxonomies a, that's the word I was yeah. looking for. Taxonomy is yeah. a nightmare. It's a way of categorizing and organizing things. And it always sounds really, really smart. Mm -hmm. um, and its utility in a wide range of applications is almost useless. It's like we get to the thing we want and then we throw the taxonomy away and we work with the things we want. So it is. it goes back to this idea of, to me, folders are workspaces. What is the information you want to work with? And I don't care where it came from or what it is. Like, just let me get it together and then I'll work with it. And there are people that do Dewey Decimal System and all this other stuff that care about taxonomies. But as an individual in practice, I think I label things because it makes me feel good. But I really can't give you a single instance where having a tag on a file helped me find anything. I find things either from search or because they're connected or I know where I used it. And so I can go to that workspace and find it again. And then it leads me to the other things I'm looking for. So association to me is way more powerful. Like search and association dominate. Taxonomies are like, yeah, no. You know, and it's sort of like, if you're looking for a shirt, do you ever go look for your shirt by the fabric it's made out of? You go to your closet or the dresser. Like, where do you keep your shirts? That's how we look for shit. But when we're dealing with knowledge and academics, they have reasons to assign taxonomies. And maybe it's useful for them, but as somebody that wants to consume or digest or play with ideas, I don't get a lot of utility out of that. I still do it, but it's a waste of time. And I can't bring myself to stop. So it's sort of this yeah. dumb thing I do. Yeah. Um, my it's, where bigger, the, it's where the OCD in us could really take uh, over. Right. Yeah. And so, I try not to spend time on systems. Like, here's what I love about this thing is like, if you combine the idea that it's organic, and what that means is you, you're, uh, it's the mise en place method of cooking. You just improve as you go. Chefs clean as they go. And so sometimes on some day you may go, oh, uh, AC, and it could be, maybe there's music you want to start tracking, things that affect your mood and improve your mental toughness. Like there's some association there and it's, I'm making this up right now. Sounds plausible. And it ends up being a top level note. Well, come back later. And you're like, why is that in my- Hey, Scott, my hang on one second. Yeah, yeah, Bryce? No, no, have fun. You'll be back for dinner though, right? Okay, cool. So you made up this note, you, you were in a hurry, you stuck it in the root level of your, your vault, and then two or three days later, weeks later, whatever, you come back and you're like, why is that there? Move it, no drama, put it where it belongs. Nothing's lost, it's more important to capture and go. And I find that I try to, so I do this thing where I post every, almost every day, some quote from a book I read, and then my thoughts about that quote, and I try to link to the book the quote came from on Amazon. If you wanna go read it yourself, I just trying to make it easy for you. So my library, I've been steadily building up these Amazon quotes, and it always surprises me, I'll come across a quote, and then sure enough, I don't have the link to Amazon in my note. So I pause, go to Amazon, I get the link, I add it to the note, the note is now better, Away you go. I don't stop and try to make every single book in my thing have a link to Amazon. I'm like, I'll just do it when I need it. But the beauty of this system is that when I update it, it's always a little better. It's always a little more useful. So if you want to get into the associations, think of these as little workbenches. So for now, a top level workbench on mental toughness, just do that. It's simple. And in the future, you might go, oh, I've got one on, I, you get into psychology or you might get into physical training and it deserves its own folder. And all of a sudden you got like 20 folders. You're like, resources, move them into resources. And now the things you're curious about go into the resource folder. But let's say you're gonna write a book. You're like, that's a big deal. You might be okay with a top level thing. That's your book 
where you're going to write all your resources there. You might go, ah, it's really a project. You get into a projects folder. Like I said, I have 250 folders and 8,000 some odd documents. So my thing tends to be para, projects, areas, resources, and archives. And then I do have little weird utility folders like templates, library, um, authors go in the library. Uh, uh, so I have author cards. Um, I have a cool author template that will list all the books by that author um, and my own ranking system, uh, which is fun, but even that's not very useful. Like I have no, it was a cool thing to do with Obsidian, but it never solves, has never solved the problem I've had. It was like, that was cool, but I don't care. Yeah, um, I, I tend to stop reading books I don't like too. So yeah, it's, just, I mean, it's either going to be zero or five, right? Yeah, all in or finish it, right? Paro is projects, areas, resources, and when you're done with it, archive it. You never delete anything. You just move it out of your way. Okay, so I'm I'm sharing my screen. Um, hey, I made a so do, so I could potentially you can drag. You can drag folders into folders and make subfolders, yep. right? Hundred percent. Okay. So I can have a folder. I the the base is Obsidian, but I could actually make a base that's just mental toughness, and then I have a folder for the books, mm -hmm. a folder for the concepts, which is essentially the book I would write if I was to write it. I would and encourage then, you. So this is this is important. Is I I have like it's really weird two levels deep is deep enough for most work as soon as you try to go to three then i would encourage you that you're now mixing what you're doing and moving that's where you go to time if you're going to finish a book a book is going to get done mixing book work into your research thoughts and your notes that's when it gets complicated if it's a thing that's going to be finished and you want to work on it soon i would encourage you to give it its own folder and get and Think of that folder as a project. And then all the tools about finishing come into play. Smart, time, like you want a specific, measurable, all that. Like do all that stuff for projects. If it is a something you're studying, then to me, I think you want more of a sandbox where it's more freeform, more playful, more curiosity. You're cultivating your curiosity. You're literally playing with ideas. And so you don't want a goal because it's open-ended. Goals are about, I got to close it. I got to finish it. I got to shut it down and get it done. Curiosity is open. Discovery, you know, what could it be? Where could you go? And and there are two different modes of thinking. And so that's another reason to keep them separate. And the third high priority one to me is when I get into areas, that is, I can I share, do a screen share? I'm not trying to overwhelm you, but I was sharing this with somebody I think you can keep sharing and I can share. It's just, you're gonna see my screen. No, I'd rather, yeah, just go ahead. Um, um, okay, so this is, I'm chapter president for EO this year. So here is my thing where if you can see projects, areas, resources, archives, and I have a thing for attachments because I put a lot of images and stuff. I can't tell you if that was a good idea or not. That's where it started. Um, I'm a big user of daily notes. Don't worry about that. You don't need that for what you're doing. Um, and so, and a couple of templates and some other stuff. So I've got these utility folders, but the top four are where I do most of my work areas. When I started to be EO president, I started this folder in this note. You can see how many notes are freaking in that folder, but this became where I remember all my stuff. Are you prior military? Am I what? Prior military? No, I'm not. Because you use a date time group. I I rarely ever see the date time group, but you. Oh is yeah. That, is that something you put you put in the date time group? Like yeah, that's military? part of the. Okay, so that's the Zettelkasten system. So in Zettelkasten, the first part of a um, a note year month day hour minute you made the note hyphen so that way like i can give you an example if i do a quick uh let's say I try to do a quick open if i start typing let me get my hands on the right part of the keyboard uh chapter one there's three chapter ones right 
So one of the ways of managing them is you put that unique number, they're not going to collide with each other. In fact, there's even more chapter ones. There's like six or seven of them. And so using that unique number frees you up of dealing with name collision. You're like, yeah, just it's going to be unique. And a lot of people don't even give them a title. They just give it that number and go, that's the note. And they'll use the alias to get it, make it easier to read. But that uh, military system gives you unique notes. Rarely do people make more than one note a minute. It's really, really uncommon to hit one note a minute. Do you so, type that in or do you have a shortcut to get that in there? I have a shortcut to get that in. And if um, I can, that I can help you set up if you want to do that. If you want to go down that path, I can show you how to do that piece. Um, but where I was going with areas, as you can see, there's some standards and goals, but this is just a ton of information and resources about this area of my life. I'm gonna, I've been doing this for 18 months. I'm gonna do it for another year. So the finish line will be when I no longer have this role, I will archive all this stuff. But in the meantime, I don't have a specific objective to quote, finish it. It's all the information, including standards I've set for myself. Like I wanna contribute, I wanna make sure it matters. And so this is more about how I'm committing to show up for my chapter, my board, um, you know, the other president peers, like this is how I'm gonna participate and how I'm gonna play this role that I have in my life. So that's what areas are for me. And so the kinds of information that are stored in areas are, the good thing of it is the mindsets or the outfits or the information I have to have to do that job well. It's not a project. Mm -hmm. And so- I mean, it, I, Yeah, I love it. It's like a, yeah, like a role. I get it. Yeah. yeah. And so you could rename these, you know, goals, roles, uh, interests, and, you know, treasures, grit. I was thinking of calling it that. You could say, here's my goals. And it's just the stuff you're trying to get finished. The roles I have, here's this stuff I'm in. Mm -hmm. And what am I interested in? Those are my interests. Um, that to me is, I just haven't renamed all of this yet. I could if I wanted to. I just, I've been using this for several years. But conceptually, the reason I'm telling you that is they also organize by time. I want a project to be done freaking in the next 90 days. Sometimes they're longer, but to me, it's like they align with rocks in EOS mm -hmm. um, uh, or uh, uh, OKRs. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you're doing objectives and so 90 day things are great for projects. I'm going to be in this role. Like I said, it's a two and a half year commitment being your president. So mm -hmm. that's a soon thing. Yeah, I do it every day, but it's like, it's, it's not as urgent as a rock or a key objective or a project. And then interests are all about the future. And when you say resources, interests Res and resources, interests and resources are the same to me. So like to pop open my resource channel, cause I think I'm still sharing is uh, AI, hundreds of notes into that. Like, cause I've been tracking this since late 2022 when OpenAI opened the first playground and ChatGPT hadn't come out yet. We were like, wow, this is pretty cool. Um, 3D printing, I have a 3D printer over here. Um, you know, and some of it is just stuff that I've learned over time and those end up being my archives of notes that I'm interested in, things I might play with. Um, and you can see it builds up over time. Like one of them is life hacks. One of them is, believe it or not, I know seven different journaling systems. <laughs> you just think like, what? Well, I've been doing this a long time. All of a sudden you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. A gratitude journal. Well, that's one way to do it. And there's expressive writing. Well, that's a different, and put them all together. You know, like if I, Depending upon what you're trying to do, I could probably recommend a journaling system that will help you live a better life for the problem you're trying to solve now. So that's a big system. And I know people that have, I, not personally, but I've heard of people with, you know, tens of thousands of nodes. So Scott, I'm gonna do, you have, do you have Obsidian on your phone or is it just? I do. Phone? Yep. I keep it on my phone and I use Obsidian Sync it is more reliable for me than using iCloud or OneDrive. Um, and so I use Obsidian Sync and it keeps my laptop and my phone like totally in sync. They 
if I enter something on my phone, it is moments later shows up on my desktop. How do these guys make money, Obsidian? Um, I think that they make money through the subscriptions to their services like Sync and Publish. Okay. Um, and I think I also paid it. I paid him a contributor fee. Um, if you use it commercially, you're supposed to pay for it. I don't know what that means uh, to use it or not use it commercially, but I'm like, hey, I'll contribute because I think you were a kick-ass piece of software. Um, and I don't know. I mean, they may be taking the Discord model that they're trying to get big enough for the big enough user base that somebody acquires them. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. Discord was amazing and it was totally free. And I'm like, how are they getting paid? Well, Microsoft bought them for like $400 million. I'm like, that would work. Yeah. So then just like uh so the the difference between like my same my same page does this as well you can you can just put uh the i think it's the pound sign and then you just type and it'll it'll find connected pages it's just not as the, like it doesn't do markup and it's just not as handy that way and um and they really haven't changed it it looks seems like obsidian has some resources behind it um yeah and there's a really really vibrant plugin uh, community. They're developing some really powerful um, plugins for Obsidian. Okay. So what's the number one? Yeah, I, I get adding the notes and having everything connected and then archiving. But so when, have I, gosh, what's a good question? So Scott, I have a question for you. Just um, sure. do, you, do you have anything in your and your obsidian mind on uh, scaling products. Oh, uh, in my database on of scaling products. Yeah, like how how does this how does this get? Because I can ima I imagine the most notes you write never get viewed again. Yeah, I mean I think that that's probably fair. Um, and but, but when you do want to use it, what do you do? Okay, so here's um an example of let's when i do want to use it so you talked about writing a book so i this last year wrote a book called work at play and the work at play had to pull together um it was the book of a workshop that i run so i do a workshop where we it's bring people together and teach them how to work together better using a cooperative video game not a competitive one and that workshop was based on a lot of psychology research and it has to do with um, impression management. So the original book that exposed me to it was Charles Duhigg. So here, here's a thread of how all this worked for me. I read a book, Charles Duhigg called um, Smarter, wow. Faster, Better. Oh, right, yes. I'm like, oh, cool. So he talks about Project mm -hmm. Aristotle at Google. Uh -huh. I'm like, that's interesting. And um, so I then go to the source material at Google and I start pulling everything together. So I've got the book, I'm doing more research and I'm finding about, now I know about Amy Edmondson. So I start pulling Amy Edmondson's work. So I'm pulling on this thread. I'm like, this is super interesting. And I'm now pulling together a lot of stuff that becomes the basis of my PowerPoint that I use for my workshop. Bundle that project up, it gets archived and the finished PowerPoint is a resource. So that's why sometimes it isn't always interests. It's just ready to go. If I ever need it again, I can do it again. When it was time to write the book, what did I do? Started a thing with the book, pulled the PowerPoint presentation, pulled that, but I've got the original notes. So all of the psychology research through the entire presentation is now at my fingertips. And then I start writing, do the outline of the book, and I just start filling in chapter after chapter walking through how the presentation works but now i'm giving you the stories my stories from applying it um because what happens if when i go do a workshop i create a project because i've got travel i've got people to talk to i've got all these things that are related to this event that i'm doing i go do the event i come back i enter stories about the event that's all done archive it i'm writing the book all that material is available at my fingertips so now I'm giving you the research, my experience applying it, stories from people using it, and every freaking asset, every picture I captured, every photo I took is all on my notebooks. 
And so when I'm done with the book, I now have a 190 page, you know, book that in color with pictures and diagrams and, but you know, it's like 190 footnotes of, you can go find the same source material I did and it's done. I'm like, here you go, send it to the editor and she edits it and cleans up my prose and boom, I'm published. So for me, years of effort, none of it gets thrown away and it's extremely reusable. And that's really the big thing is that I've started seeing that everything I produce is it this system is easily the basis for another piece of work. So I can be really fast in producing new work and new product and new content because of this system. It's just like, oh, I know exactly where that is or I can get it. And it always brings with it more connections, right? So it wasn't like, oh, I just have the PowerPoint. It's like, no, I have the PowerPoint and everything that made that PowerPoint, every image that went into it, all the original notes that went into it, all the source material that went into it, it's all available. So for me, that's how um, we, uh, I'm in a service business. I've, I've not shipped a physical product, but even at Game Truck, when we started working with Quan Gon um, and ZTag, and we started offering ZTag, everything about how we rolled that out and studied it, made sure it would fit our market, all that works in a folder in my archives. So if I ever had to do that again, I could just lay my hands on it instantly and repurpose it. I could follow the method again um, and apply it to something different. Let's say we wanted to do gel tag. Okay, let's run the playbook. I can use the original project as a template for the new one. Duplicate it, edit it, take off and go. Part of this is based on storage is infinite. You know how hard it is to fill a terabyte if it's not video? Yeah. It's like, yeah, gigabytes is like, yeah, I got enough. Like this will be last me forever. I mean, it, my note base looks huge. It uses less than three gig of Obsidian sync storage. It, and when you're when you're throwing um, when you're when you're throwing pictures in there, does it actually show the picture? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. It is. Um, it's they, just drag and drop, probably right. Yeah, it's just drag and drop. It's super. It's super simple. It is. Um, so like your event note might go really, really long. Yeah. Let me give you a. So one of the things I do is I use a thing called daily notes. So my daily notes allow me to. Sometimes I'm just going from meeting to meeting to meeting, and I don't have time. Um, to dig in and go. I, so I'm just going to drop it right in that note of today and this is what my daily note looks like and you asked about pictures i'm going to try to do was it this one is it june one? Oh, come on where's the one where we went through it must have been friday yeah here we go so you're just getting screen grabs is that we were going through our new dashboard and my my uh president of my company chief operating officer he's my integrator is a genius and he just starts reading off his analysis of all these graphs. I'm like, stop, wait, what are you doing? How are you interpreting all this information? It, it was amazing. I even grabbed one of us, all of us in the meeting because I thought, well, that'll be fun. Um, and it just looks, that's how it renders. I just drop them in there. And with what I did with this is eventually I might take this, copy it out and put it in its own note, its own project, its own whatever. But once I had this, I recorded a loom. And I sent it to him going, you know, here's a four minute loom we can send to all of our franchise owners so they can interpret the dashboard the same way you do. Is this correct? He goes, yeah, you nailed it. So for me, having a safe place to keep information reliably quickly like this is super reusable. Could So if you, if you throw in as the day goes by and you're taking notes in, in this, um, is there a is there a way to pull out all the to dos? Yeah, hundred percent. There are two great plugins that will let you do that. Um, you can pull out all the to dos with. Um, there's a way. I was literally going to work on that this afternoon because um, I'm going to start doing more of my to dos. I've been I haven't really done it with this, but you can do that. Um, data view that plugin that treats it like a database will find to-dos. 
so you can pull a list um and there's a super popular uh let me find it community plugin browse uh not advanced tables where's the to do one to do i think it's tasks there you go 1.2 million tasks that plugin is a beast it is amazing at um it gives you it extends the functionality of obsidian to be darn near a full bore um task manager it'll give you start dates completion dates tons of little icons and glyphs and just stuff that's like a lot of quality of life stuff um i haven't used it yet i'm i'm not sure i'm going to i'm not sure i'm ready for something that heavy duty um but you know that is a example of you can absolutely put tasks in and i i tend to do that every day anyway is in my daily tasks i have my template has my daily habits so i wake up in the morning and i've got the things i'm going to make sure i do every morning when i wake up so i can just check them off check my habits off and then i have a task list i'm like i'm going to do this with tasks um one of the things i tend to do um is outside of what you're doing with yours is remember i was talking about areas well for being the ceo of game truck all my employees are in that folder and i can add i want to talk to them about this so there's a plugin called quick add that will let me just go hey remember to talk to brandon and it'll add it to his note and so all i have to do is pull up that note whenever we have a same page meeting and I go, oh, yeah, here's all the things I wanted to remember to talk to Brandon about, it. you know. So for me, it's about putting information where it's useful. Mm -hmm. um, Tiago Forte calls it being actionable, like organized for actionability. Where are you going to act on this? You know, like what context does it make sense for you to act on something? So let me let me uh, throw something out at you. So, sure. uh, so first, I want to so much I appreciate this. And we we're out. Of I time. hope it's helpful for you. Yeah. Do you have another minute or two? Yeah, absolutely. I'm fine. Okay, cool. Um, so there's a few things you said that were that were super useful. Um, so one is this idea of linking linking notes based mm -hmm. on just your cognitive curiosity. Like so, yep. projects versus curiosity. I, I like that distinction. The where I was going is is I'm reading through a book. Typically, each chapter of a mental toughness book is yep. a topic. Typically, right. right? So as I'm working through a book, I go from like, this is the first book and I'm, I'm going back through all my, cause I, I like to actually have physical books, but I'm seeing why maybe I'd want to do Kindle for these notes as well. So the, but so like, I'm as I'm going chapter to chapter, I'm pulling the, the key concept, making a note, linking it to the next chapter, the next key concept. And I finish that book. And then I'm like, all right, I'm going to start the new book the next book and so the next book is i don't know maybe the crossfit right uh, the crossfit coach that wrote a book that's fantastic and that book has oh he has a concept wait that's just like this concept so instead of going doing a new concept i just go to the the concept that is already there and i add his stuff to it and then i go oh this is a new one i go here this is well, no, this is something Greg said here. Oh wait, this is something new. This is something new. This is Greg. This is going in a different order now. Okay, so so I would tell you that I have done absolutely both of those, right? It, my experience is that um, trust your gut, play with it. Uh -huh. um, I have had, so one of the most common, co so I like psychology. So I have a list of 90 cognitive biases. There's things we've noticed about the way human brain works. Oh. And 60 of those have notes. Um, confirmation bias has to be uh, one of the most common ones. And so there's one that is literally, I, I can't remember the book. There was a chapter like cognitive bias. It was probably one of a Dave McRaney book. Well, there was another book um, that did something similar. And I'm like, I'm just adding it to this one. So did exactly what you're talking about. So that note is really comprehensive. So anytime I get anything new on CB, I'm like, add it to that one, just flesh it out. However, 
there were other instances where um, Brene Brown's Atlas of the Heart was really about emotions and emotional vocabulary. And so I did much more of, I'm going to um, do this chapter by chapter. So there's a couple of books that maybe talk about um, anger, right? Big deal for men, like how do you handle your anger? So in that context, I'm like, no, I'm keeping them separate. Even though they're, I, it's easy to link them. That's why I have connections at the bottom. So I'm like, hey, see this stuff in Brene Brown's, you know, chapter on anger. Um, but it was, um, the name of the book is escaping me, but it had to do with basically on becoming a man, I think is the book. And this whole thing on, on anger. I'm like, well, I'm going to have those notes in that chapter. And it's a judgment call. It's your freaking notes. You're the one using it. Yeah. Um. So to me. It's almost like. The connections are the most important piece. They, it doesn't matter if you put it all together or connect them as long as they're as long as they're connected. It, it right? it's you playing with things you want to learn. It's your knowledge. What makes sense to you? The framework mm -hmm. makes it easy to me because it's like I don't have to worry about where I put it. I'm going to find it again. And at that moment, as I'm learning, I'm like, what makes the most sense to me? And I'm like. That's how I'm going to file it. And it's flexible enough that it doesn't cry because I didn't put it in correctly. It's like, ah, put it in there. And this is the beauty. If I change my mind later, let's say you put that idea from, you know, the mental toughness. Um, let's say there's visualization. All right, I see that again. So I'm going to put all that. And you go, man, I'm not really happy with that. Copy, paste, make the other chapter, fix it. Mm -hmm. what's the problem right that's to me that is the why i've been doing this for so long is the more i use this system the more valuable it becomes to me when i used other systems where they were like either no organization or hyper organized like we talked about with taxonomy the longer i use them the more overwhelming they became because the maintaining the system suddenly became onerous it was just too much goddamn work to make sure that that I was doing all of this correctly. And within two folders, I'm at anything in my archive. I'm at anything in my notebooks. I'm like, perfect. I'm never more than two levels deep. And then if I get close, the cross-linking, the back forward linking will get me to the thing I'm looking for if search doesn't work. And I know it sounds weird to people that search doesn't work, but how we think about things and the words we use change over time. I used yeah, to, you know, I used yeah. to think of this one particular thing as a scorecard. Well, then I did, we adopted EOS and a scorecard became a very different thing in my mind without even really thinking about it. The original thing to me was now an assessment. Hmm. And so I kept looking for an assessment everywhere and I could not find this document, but because of the, customer and the project, it led me back. I'm like, crap, I call that a scorecard. No wonder I couldn't find it. You know, so the searching didn't help, but the connections led me to the lost document. And I'm like, oh, okay. So that's why I'm a fan of this process because it's the way our brains work. We associate stuff. Yeah, totally get it. And so um, my mental toughness stuff is Sounds to me like it's a, what you would call a resource. That's just an area of interest. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. An area it's of an area of interest. interest. You're, you're exploring. When you're exploring, you're curious, you know, and you can call that top over folder anything you want. You have curiosities, whatever. But it, that's where it would go because mm -hmm. it's future oriented. It's open ended. You're exploring. When, it, when you switch mental modes and you're now going to focus on finishing a thing, I would encourage you to move that to a different space. It's a different mental movement. Got it. And the where do you put the books again? In resources, right? I just I have a folder called library. You have one oh, called right. books. Same thing. I mean, here's the books. You know, those are um, so technically they don't fit into the resource. That's a great thing. I don't keep them in resources. You absolutely could. I don't. But you wouldn't have resources, books, because that's three down. Versus yeah, I, it's, it's starting to get over almost like, yeah, no. You know, and it's, 
But you could drag books into resources and then just be there. Hundred percent. It could you easily be there. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where this gets a little bit like my personal preference is those top folders are the things I created. That in daily notes. Like that chunk is me. Mm -hmm. Everything below that is some automated system generated thing. Right. Oh, Readwise wants their own folder. Fine. Put it at the root level. Library. I didn't generate that information. Amazon did. Put it at the root level. So if it's sort of things that other systems are maintaining or updating and I didn't create it, it goes at the bottom of the list and it tends to be at the root level. I probably could clean all that up and bundle it into some other subfolder. I just haven't done it. As long as, yeah, as long as it's not at the top, you never as look at it. As long as it's it. not at the top. No. Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple, stupid. Over and over again. Yeah. I have this really strong urge to make everything tax taxonomy rich. And you're right. It just makes everything harder, much better to be in the habit of writing notes, not structured notes. There you go. That, goodness, I'm going to steal that from you. That was your okay. gift to me. Way okay. better to be in the habit of writing notes than structuring notes. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, I hope that was helpful. Yeah, super helpful, Scott. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I have probably a thousand more follow-up questions, but um, you, you know, I'm on WhatsApp. Would be, it yeah. would be dumb because we'd be wasting time where we could be writing notes. And <laughs> bottom line is write notes on things you want to remember. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the number one thing with the note is uh, like the number one reason to write a note is to have the the rep of of doing it so you can remember it. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Uh -huh. Jeff, that was super fun. Thanks for reaching out. And are you okay if I share this with people? Is there anything in here that you're not comfortable with me sharing? I don't think so. You okay. mean like this would be a training video that you would just throw out there in the EO channel? Yeah, I was just going to put it in the EO channel. Yeah, I don't even want to watch it, but sure. Same. <laughs> and then oh, and when you publish, is that publishing? Is that published to like Instagram, Facebook, or is it some other? Oh, well, there's two things. Um, I published a book so you can get your hands on, um, I haven't launched it, so I haven't done the marketing work yet, but when I say publish, there's a book. Um, but I also publish on Instagram and LinkedIn, um, those quotes. So there's things that I write on a, you know, a queue up on a regular basis. That was sort of a self-discipline mental toughness thing is, could I be consistent? And so for have years six times a week i a quote goes up for me and i'm like all right i got a chain going don't break the chain cool i'm uh then i'm adding it to the cart right now so i can check it out and get a review oh that would be amazing thank you sir yeah for sure of course um and what do you do what's your day oh uh my company is called game truck so we do video game parties for kids. It's a franchise concept. So we have franchises, 54 franchises all over the country. Uh -huh. uh, we do about 25,000 birthdays a year. Um, and then I'm super lucky. I've got an amazing team that does a great job running the company. And I'm now like this is about me getting out and doing workshops and speaking and trying to get adults to play together. <laughs> mm -hmm. We, our mission is to fight loneliness by creating feelings of belonging through play. So getting people to play together, uh, I just is, it's magic when people do it and they have these, the connections and the energy and they reconnect with each other. It's super fun. Nice. So you're the owner of the franchise. You're the franchisee. I'm the, franchise the franchisor. Franchisor. Yep. I'm the, the Zor. Zor. Yeah. Right on. Um, yeah. So it's, it's funny. I own a, I, I run, so I run a company that does defense, helps defense contractors win more business with the, the government. So I have oh, only nice. virtual clients and like IBM is a client, like only oh, many companies, a lot, a lot of companies. We have a big client list, but Booz Allen, IBM, uh, Periton, there's some of the bigger ones. Uh, and so we do end to end proposal writing, proposal development. And these proposals are big, hairy. Oh like my God, I imagine. 100 million, billion, $10 billion, like massive Jeez. projects. Um, but I, uh, where was it going with that? Um, I just randomly, I know a lawyer here in town that specializes in franchises. Oh, cool. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm always uh, looking to meet people and make connections, and it, it's a small world, but no, that's really cool. Yeah. And, so, um, maybe um, I could pick your brain because we did two workshops for Air National Guard uh, with this program, and they loved it, but they turn over frequently, and it's like getting on, you know, that like how to more consistently work with them would be great because that turned out to be harder than I thought it was going to be. Like we got two right away. We're like, Oh, this is great. And then it was like crickets. Like, Oh, mm. this is hard. So, well, I yeah. do have to go though. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let me let you go. His name's Dave Greenlee. Um, and you're game truck. So I might, yeah. might make that connection if it makes sense to you. 